In the previous video, we saw how to use an if-else conditional to make Python do one thing if a particular condition was true, and something else if that condition was false. But what if we want to have more than one condition? For example, if we were thinking about a function which was defined using three or more cases. The answer is that this can be done in Python using an if, elif, else conditional, which I'm going to explain about in this video. So let's begin by generalizing what we did at the start of the previous video. We're going to introduce a variable whose name is x, and which has a numeric value, let's say 1 to begin with, and we're going to print one message if x is positive, another message if it's 0, and a third message if it's negative. So we can begin just like we did before, with the keyword if, and then with the condition we want to check, so let's say x is greater than 0, and then a colon, and then following this, some indented code telling Python what we want to do if that condition is true. So let's print x is positive in that case. Next, we want to introduce a second condition. And we do that using elif, which is short for else if. That has to be followed by another condition. So another expression which has a Boolean true or false value. So we'd like to check if x is equal to 0. And you will remember that we have to do that using two equal signs. You must use two equal signs to check if something is equal to something else. As usual, we have to end that line with a colon, and then on the next line, indented by four spaces, we put the code which we want to be executed when that second condition is true. So in this case, we'll print x is 0. Finally, we can do exactly the same thing as we did before. We'll have else and then a colon, and the indented code following else will be executed if neither of the previous two conditions was true. So if neither of those two conditions were true, x is not bigger than 0, it's not equal to 0, so x must be negative. Let's try this out and talk through what's going to happen. On line 1, we create our variable x and we give it the value 1. On line 2, we enter the conditional. We check the condition, is x greater than 0? It is, that's true. So the indented code following line 2 will be executed and everything else will be ignored we would just get the message x is positive. So let's now go back and change the value of x to make it equal to 0. In this case, when we run the code cell, the condition on line 2 will be false. Therefore, line 3 will be ignored. Python will then look at line 4 and check the condition on line 4. That condition will be true, so Python will execute the code on line 5 and ignore everything else. Only the message x is 0 will be printed. Finally, let's try a negative value. In this case, on line 2, the condition will be false, so the indented code on line 3 will not be executed. On line 4, the condition will be false, so the indented code on line 5 will not be executed. Neither of the first two conditions was true, so the indented code following the line that begins with else will be executed, and the message x is negative will be printed. So let's recap this most general Python conditional. It begins with the word if, and then a condition which has to be something with a boolean value and then a colon. Following that, we have indented by four spaces the code which we want to be executed if this first condition is true. If this is executed, everything else is ignored. But if it's not, then we can have as many elif clauses as we like. Each elif is followed by a condition, which must be something with a true or false value. And if as soon as we find one of those being true, the indented code following it will be executed and everything else will be ignored. So only the indented code following the first condition to be true will be executed. Finally, and optionally, we can have an else at the end of our conditional. If you've got an else, then the indented code following the else will be executed if all of the previous conditions were false. So just to emphasize, you can have as many elifs as you like, so zero elifs or one elif or a thousand elifs, but only the indented code following the first condition to be true will be executed. Nothing else will be executed. And that leads to a very common error using conditionals. So consider the following code cell. On line one, a variable is created with the name x and with the value 20. On line 2, we enter a conditional and we check if x is greater than 0. If it is, line 3 is executed and the message x is positive is printed. And line 4 then begins an elif. So line 4 has an elif and the condition is x greater than 10. And that's followed by an indented code on line 5. But in fact, the code on line 5 can never be executed, no matter what value 
the variable called x has, that line 5 will never be executed. And the reason for this is that if x is greater than 10, then it's also greater than 0. That means the condition on line 2 would be true, so Python would execute the code on line 3 and nothing else. Remember, only the indented code following the first true condition is executed. All of the other parts of the conditional are ignored. The conditions are not even checked. So how could we fix this? I mean, how, how can we get rid of this problem that line 5 could never be executed? It's obviously not a good idea to include code which can never be executed. Well, the way we fix it depends on what the code is supposed to do. And that's really the most important thing here. here. You must think very carefully about exactly what you intend your code to do. For example, if you decided you want to print one message if x was bigger than 10, and a different message if x was greater than 0 but less than or equal to 10, and a third if x was less than or equal to 0, then you could use an if elif else condition as follows. Let's define x on line 1. Let's call it make it 1. Then we could say if x is greater than 10, print x is greater than 10. Next, we could have an elif x is greater than 0, and print, in that case, x is greater than 0, and less than or equal to 10. And then finally, we could have an else. The indented code following the else would be executed if neither of the previous two conditions were true, which can only happen when x is less than or equal to 0. And now this code does what is described in the previous sentence. So if x is greater than 10, you get the message that x is greater than 10. If it's between 0 and 10, you get the message telling you that. And if it's less than or equal to 0, you get a message telling you that it's less than or equal to 0. And this time, it's possible for each of those three messages to be printed. And in fact, only one and only one of those messages will be printed. So here, we'll get the message that it's greater than 0 and less than or equal to 10. If I make this 11, I'll just get the first message. And if I make this minus 4, I'll get the last message. So in this case, all three of my messages can be printed. Okay, let's move on to using an if elif else conditional in a function. So we're going to define the sine function, sine x, which is defined to be 1 if x is strictly greater than 0, 0 if x is equal to 0, and minus 1 if x is less than 0. So we should begin, as usual, with the word def, then the name of our function, then in brackets, a variable name to represent the input to our function, and then a colon. And, of course, what we have to do is enter a conditional. So we'll have if x is greater than 0, then what we want to do is output the number 1. And we specify the output of a function with the keyword return. So we'll return 1. Next, we're in the second case. So we should check L if, else if x is equal to 0. In that case, we want to return 0. Finally, if neither of those two conditions is true, then x must be less than 0. So we can simply have an else, and then in that case, we should return minus 1. OK, so there is our sine function. And the thing to notice about this function definition is that we were required to use two levels of indent because on line three, for example, we are inside a conditional inside a function definition. So we need eight spaces here. OK, let's run this and check that it works. So let's do sine of minus 10. That should be minus 1, and it is. And let's next try sine of 10. That should be 1, and it is. And finally, if we check sine of 0, that is also correct. So we've correctly defined the sine function.